Welcome to episode 219 of the Whatnots Review Show, where every week we pick a story and we talk about it. This could be a movie, TV series, anime, manga, comic book, audio drama, all kinds of entertainment. We watch it, read it, listen to it, and then we come back here and we talk about it. My name is Melissa Wilkinson, and I am joined, as always, by Kyle Springer. How great is this podcast? <laughs> Woo! I, I you, hope you, so. you guys will I get that joke. <laughs> I hope <laughs> very great. Later on, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited for this one. This is cool. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to talk about uh, what we're here to talk about today, which is the after party on Apple mm-hmm. TV Plus. Is that how you say it? it? I don't know if there's a plus there or not. I don't know if I'm imagining the plus. Because they also have the, the physical box, right, which is exactly. Apple TV. Yes. So, I, look, I, I was going to say we'll get to the after party, but let's talk about Apple TV. TV is for it, a sec here because I, I have the Wikipedia article for the after party up and it does say Apple TV plus. OK, that's confusing to me because, yeah, they do have a b- b- box that is Apple TV. It's similar to a Roku, yes. but it's a, it's an Apple a thing. But they also have an a- a- app and you can buy the box separate from the app. And the, the, yes. I do, yeah, so they're different. It's confusing. It's weird. Also, when I had to like type in the information for the stream and I put the like the description of like this week we're talking about, it's usually like we're talking about Netflix's new action movie, The Gray Man or, or stuff like yeah. that, which we talked about la, 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 last week. But the ones that have the plus sign in them are always awkward. So strange. Because it's like Apple TV plus apostrophe s like and how does this work do i spell out plus or is it still the symbol because they use, you use it like an adjective this is the apple tv plus show the after party also after party is one word and i don't i don't i didn't believe that was customarily the way but i may i don't go to a lot so of after I, parties so i guess i didn't know how to spell it i g- guess i kind of always figured it was one word but i don't know it just it, it, so I so I I haven't ventured into the realm of Apple TV or Apple TV mm. Plus yet until this week. Um, yes. So I, I, I just I have an iPhone. I, I like iPhones. I like Mac computers. I haven't had one in a while because uh, I've had to you switch like apples. to PC. I like apples in general. Yeah. Great stuff. Love the juice. Uh, <laughs> um but i i just haven't made it to their tv show stuff yet um and so you you had pitched some some th- I, were they all from apple tv or, or no, was it just it was this three one? party shows it was this search party, party or party down interesting yeah uh and, and i i thought murder mystery crime show that speaks to me right so i'll pick yes. the, 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 that that one but it also happened to be on this platform that i haven't <laughs> ventured into personally and because of that we haven't covered anything from it here on the mm-hmm. podcast um so i was like you know what today's the day let let's let's yeah. start let's go let's see what they got here on apple tv yeah. plus uh, and so we watched do the that. after party. Yeah, we should try to hit at least one show from every streaming service. I'm sorry you'll have to get Paramount TV Plus back <laughs> <laughs> so you can watch Players or something. Yeah, but we'll have to go back and watch The Offer at some p- point because that show <laughs> was actually good. Um, uh-huh. It's like the, the one good thing on there that's not Star Trek. <laughs> have you heard of Players? We'll get to the after party in a minute. Have you heard of Players? I have not. No. It is a docudrama series formatted like a uh, a sports documentary, like where you're okay. following players yeah. through a tournament, but it's esports. Mm, yeah. So it's fictional. I don't know if they're playing a real game in the show. I've just heard about it on podcasts, but they said this shouldn't work, but it does. This is surprisingly very good. <laughs> Interesting. This is very richly done characters, and I'm I'm really intrigued to talk to you about that at some point, since you know about video games and I do not. But yeah, <laughs> parties. We both know about parties. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm a party people's. Hey, 
party people is in the place to be, we're about to talk to the after party, right? Yeah, no. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> we watched the uh the Apple TV Plus show The After Party. This came out in January of this year, January mm-hmm. 28th, 2022, and it was created by Christopher Miller of Lord and Miller. Yeah, of of Spider-Man and uh, into the Spider-Verse. Oh, he's back thing. there. Right? Yeah. The good, good old Miles. We talk about one of Miles' friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, to be clear, though, this is a live action show. Uh, it is yes. for the most part, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it is a murder mystery in 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 the most classic sense. Yes, uh, which I lo- 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 love. It's not like your t- t- typical crime sh- show that would be on on HBO or Netflix or who knows what. Uh, it, it yeah, it is a clue style. Yeah, murder mystery. Um, and every episode uh, is basically the perspective of a different character that was there at this after party. It's them retelling their side of the story. Uh, and every episode, as it fa- follows a new person, also does a new genre, kind of yes. of like. This one is an art house film or this one is an animated movie or this one is a musical or this Mm -hmm. one is a. So it's it's really interesting. There's always something new visually. Uh, It's also a comedy. Uh, It's 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 really fun. I was pleasantly surprised uh, by this. Um, I, I, I. it's one that I hadn't heard of until you mentioned it. Oh, um, so I, I, I think. I mean, I mean, like I said at the start, I hadn't really ventured into Apple TV yet. Mm. But I, I just want to put a good word in there for that show. If you're only going to Apple TV for like Severance or for All Mankind or something like that don't skip out on something like the after yes. party it's a g- good show mm-hmm. it's only eight episodes the first episode is longer because it has to establish this premise of there is a a 15 year high school reunion so everybody mm-hmm. in the show is like approximately our age and uh after this high school reunion, everybody goes to the mansion of one of the uh, one of the people is a big pop star. Everybody goes to his mansion for this after party and he is murdered. And so this detective shows up. She's not really she's not technically a detective. Like she's not really supposed to be there. She's supposed to just basically collect evidence, do some grunt work. But she's like, no, I got to figure this out. I think I can crack this. And every episode is her interviewing one person who was there. They tell their side of the story, what happened that night. And everybody's perspective is a different genre. She says, like, everybody thinks they're the star of their own movie. So everybody's flashback is a different type of movie. So the first Mm -hmm. episode's longer to establish a lot of the premise. But then all the episodes are, like, 35 minutes long. There's only eight of them. It is pretty quick to get through. And it is compelling. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> this show you could definitely binge and then get a lot of repeat value out of it later. It's very dense. It's packed with details. There's a lot that you can go back and realize. Oh, I didn't know those things were connected. Yeah, um, it 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 wraps itself up very nicely. However, yes. I do do know that they are already working on a season two. Uh, yeah, so I just read that. Will be more of this show. I, d- I don't know if that means there's going to be a new mystery that uh, like a like all new cast. We says, follow the same detective or who knows what. Um, uh, In March, it was renewed for a second season. And then in April, it was revealed that the second season would consist of 10 episodes, two more than the first. Cool. And will revolve around a murder mystery at a wedding. Uh, so who knows? It may be the, there's two characters who get together in this. Maybe it is their wedding or maybe uh, it yeah. is a whole new set of characters. We don't know. Yeah, there are two characters in here that kind of start up a romantic interest mm-hmm. in one and the other. So maybe it is down the road and it's their marriage or who knows what. Um, that could be good. Could be fun. Uh, but yeah. I, I, I enjoy this show a lot. It is, like I said, a very, very classic mystery. Uh, I do think it is 
not necessarily one you can solve just by watching it. Like, I, I know I some so. amateur detectives like to follow along and be like, aha, I know it. It is this guy. I, 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 I don't think you can do that. You probably could. It's technically probably possible. <laughs> but I don't think you're going to solve it uh, just casually watching it. Um, but it, it is still it's still really entertaining. Mm -hmm. It's really fun. Uh, it, it's not the most laugh out loud funny, but it is funny. Like it, it's funny enough to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that that makes it sound bad. I like it's not I a great comedy. Laughs. Yeah, there, there <laughs> are some there are some great lines. There's some things you don't expect. It's just it's 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 a good show. Highly recommend yeah. it. Go check it's it out. So successful being a comedy, being a murder mystery, and being a, a genre exercise every yeah. episode. Ab like absolutely, it really excellently executed everything it set out to do. And when you get to the murder reveal, I was really surprised. Like, I didn't see it coming. But then after it is revealed, I'm like, that does track. That does make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Um, great cast of characters, too. There's a few people in there uh, that you will recognize. Some you might yeah. not. Um, yeah. It, it just, I, I, I cannot recommend this enough. Mm -hmm. it, I think it might fly under some people's radar so don't miss this one it's good good yeah. fun cool uh well with that i say we take a break for housekeeping uh mm -hmm. and then we will dive in and get into the spoiler section of the show so we will be right back we put a lot of hard work into the shows that we make. And yes, we make multiple different shows here at The Whatnots. And we'd love it if you check them all out. You can find out more information on our website at thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. When you type in The Whatnots, all of our shows will pop up right there. Just don't forget to give us a nice rating and review if you like the shows. If you want to support what we do here at The Whatnots, patreon.com slash The Whatnots is the best place to do that. You can support us for as little as a dollar a month. You can get all kinds of exclusive content at the $3 tier. You can also get a shout out and a thank you on all of our shows at the $5 tier. You can support us on Twitch by subscribing to our channel at twitch.tv slash the whatnots. And we would love to have you all join us for our live streams and talk with us in the chat. And lastly, we have merch. If you'd like to grab yourself a shirt or a sweatshirt or a mug or something else, go to the whatnots.com slash store to pick up some merch today. And we are back. A big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for Thank supporting you. us. It means a lot. We appreciate it. Cool things that we've been up to here at The Whatnots. Uh, while we did have some technical difficulties this past mm -hmm. week uh, and maybe had to cancel the captain's log or something, um, we, 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 Melissa, you and I switched podcasts this yes. week um you had this idea to so that i would listen to some of the ones you listen to and you would listen to some of the ones that i mm. listen to and while we haven't recorded that yet uh i think we still will be talking about all of that yes. uh, next time we record the captain's log whenever that may be i know we said there might be some time for us to record that today um, but we're we're unsure. We're playing it by air. Mm. Uh, so be mm. on the lookout for that. Yeah. Uh, a similar thing with our reactions to She-Hulk. We did not get to record our first one, so we mm. are combining our first and second one, which we will do this mm. next um, week. Uh, so again, continue to be on the lookout for all of that uh video game stuff happening uh nintendo is a company that i think most everyone knows about uh nintendo of america has recently had some issues um mm. some labor complaints some complaints of sexism in the workplace so on and so forth uh and that's really interesting to hear because usually they're very tight-lipped about what goes on at the 
company uh and it's it's very rare that we get an inside look at what's happening there and there have, have been some unfortunate reports uh of that stuff so you if you're into video games go check out crossplay our video game podcast um but yeah i think that is about it for spoilers uh so without further ado let's get into the rest of the show spoilers Here yeah we are. watch out uh so i i yeah lots of things i did not expect uh uh-huh. did not expect there to be an episode that was mostly animated um, yes did not expect uh, just uh, kind of how wild and crazy everything thing got in this <laughs> I, I i i think that is one of the the strengths of this mm. show from uh god uh from ben schwartz's character like trying to yes. start his own music career yes. and just being awful at it and yet his whole <laughs> his whole thing is a musical and like he's yes. he's singing he's dancing perfect. he's, he's perfect rapping for it. it's it's great it's wild then to to have a whole hell <laughs> episode where they they interview the kid was not yes. expecting that until like I love that ingredient. I, I, I saw love a, that there's a, a picture, and I was like, "Oh, they interview her. That's brilliant." I didn't think yeah. about that. Um, I love that ingredient that there's like a six year old who's peripheral yes. to everything that's happening, and she gives her perspective on it. And every it's all all the actors get to do these big exaggerated motions. So when they're mad, they stomp the way they wave their arms, really big <laughs> facial m- movements, and. When she pictures the world, she's like some people are Muppets. <laughs> Walt just says yeah. his name over and over again, like just a like, Pokemon. You're not real. <laughs> God, yeah, it's 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 interesting. I love the cast. Uh, I, yeah. I like how there's there's a couple characters that I don't even remember the last names of these characters. It's just you're Gen One and you're Gen Two, and uh, exactly they're, like they're, they don't they're have both fun. pregnant. Like, like that, is, they're the pregnant gens. Uh, <laughs> You're right. They don't have like last initials. Like one of their identities is based on the other one. There isn't a Jennifer two without a Jennifer one. Why did she agree to be Jennifer two? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just, I, I, I was really impressed with how much mm-hmm. fun they make this show. Yeah. Um, and and how interesting each each one is. Um, now I I do, 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 do have to say this is maybe it's it's not it's not a critique against this show. It's mm. it's just I think more of an observation of Apple TV's other offerings is that I uh-huh. I, 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 I think compared to things like maybe more of what you've heard of like a Ted Lasso or a Severance or something like that. I I think. Those sh- shows might be on, and I I haven't seen Ted Lasso, so I can't speak to that. But Se- Severance and Pachinko, in particular, are on just another level of quality mm-hmm. than th- this. This seems to be a step down in that stuff, but I but that's not a critique on this yeah, show. It's- like this show is still fantastic. Um, and so, like I've been saying a number of t- <laughs> times, I think it, it might get passed over just because mm. those ones are g- 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 garnering mm. so much success that, like, they gets overshadowed. But uh, yeah, I, I I had a blast with with, with this one. Yeah, this <laughs> isn't a show, <laughs> Kyle. Don't be making a mess over there. <laughs> I, this isn't a show that needs high production value well it, it right. i mean it's got things like it doesn't look super glitzy because it has to have an entire animated episode it has to build puppets like you can right, tell yeah. where they spread their budget <laughs> around to and it doesn't feel prestigious i don't know if any comedy feels prestigious necessarily this is a show that you could believe would also be on tbs but 
yeah, sure. that's not a problem. Like it's it's really solid comedy work. I I'm I love that it's such a high premise. It's such a dedicated, small, real hardworking little package of a show. Yeah. I I wonder how much of it was improv. Like I I, I, I don't wonder yeah. like how much did they know, like, okay, this is your character. These are the story beats that we need to get some of the smaller details about yeah. what exactly yeah. you say. Uh, and if there's something that you, you, you say and we, we have to be like, all right, now we have to nix that, you know, do, do it again. I'm sure they did, 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 did that. But it really felt like there was a good amount of space for these these actors yeah. to just work and and, yeah. and just have fun w- with this. Um, and I, yeah, I like I, you. I I, th- I think you could like absolutely see all of these ca- 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 characters just having fun uh with all of the wild stuff that is happening at this after (laughs) party (laughs) it's preposterous yeah it's i want to say another strength of the show i think is that when it has characters that are jerks they give them enough redeeming qualities like brett's not a great guy but he's a better guy than you would expect you see why zoe divorced him but you also see why zoe married him in the first place why they had a kid together he has enough good qualities uh and i really appreciate whenever a show decides hey we don't go out to go that far with making this character a, a douchebag he, he can have a couple things about him that are kind of nice. That's not going to wreck our tone. We can get the point across if he just right. it, you know, doesn't have to do everything the worst way possible. Like there's a joke about how like he's critiquing um, Officer Dannon about her, uh, her, her strategy in the final episode about how she like came into the crime scene. And he's like, I'm a first responder. And somebody's like, you're a part time volunteer fireman. And I'm like, being a part-time volunteer fireman is still a very good thing to be. Like, that's right, fairly yeah. noble. Right. It's 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 interesting because, yeah, I, I, I think most shows would only give you that one perspective. The the, the yeah. stuff that it that it said you might see stuff from different characters perspective, like as a fly on the wall on that stuff. But this show, there's what, like 10 or 12 potential or I, I guess there's yeah. like eight uh seven or eight people there so you see the same story from multiple different perspectives so even though you might get the full perspective of the like that one particular character and then uh maybe like he might show up again Again, in someone else's perspective yeah. that dealt with him that night, you might see him in the back g- g- round of another character's perspective who maybe doesn't know him as much or like knew mm-hmm. him, but just like was not in the same friend circle. Or like, like you see all these different perspectives and interactions to be like, yes, OK, in this perspective, you are a complete jerk. But from this yeah. character's perspective, you're, you're like you understand it because they opened up to you about this yeah. one thing and you now know this other thing. So when you see it in this third character's perspective and you know why he's acting this way, yeah. it's like, oh, because he's that it's the uh, OK. Yeah, I see. And yeah, you get these really nice character arcs uh, mm-hmm. within these these story that reveal themselves in interesting ways because of this like just this kind of broken record style yeah. of the show where it just keeps showing you the same things over and over. But every time there's just something new, there's some change of detail, some change of perspective. Yeah. Uh, and it, it really, really works. Cause yeah, that apology scene uh, where he, he like steps, he steps up and is like, Hey, I, I'm starting to understand like yes. why th- this is the way it has to be. And I apologize and I'm going to work on that. I know mm-hmm. that won't change it, but uh, like, like yes. that actually, it actually feels sincere. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I, I think that is absolutely a, sh- a strength of the show is that you can yeah. take these characters that maybe feel like stereotypes, right? Uh-huh. It's like, Oh, he is the, jock slash jerk 
slash yes uh, j- like j- j- yeah and, and, and like that that is him that like he is mildly successful uh mm. and, and is, is 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 just like you you think you know him based off of that but then w- once you really start to get into the motivations and of these characters and what happened and their histories you're know, like okay i understand him yeah i i love that the show being so full of detail and spending so much time with a small handful of characters and repeating things over and over again and seeing them from different angles is ultimately a very human thing to do. Like the show has a lot of empathy for everybody that's in it. Even Xavier, uh, for all his failings, for all the times when he, when he is obnoxious, he also has moments where he seems lost. He seems confused. He seems pressured. You have enough sympathy for that character. Uh, you know, when his death isn't necessarily a tragedy, but it isn't also like, oh, good riddance. Like it's something in between. Right. And I like that it was handled that way. Yeah. Um, I think the only my, my only critique for the sh- show is that. I think there was one episode that. I maybe think we didn't need. And uh, I, I say that hesitantly because I still think it's a good episode, mm. but I feel like it was the one that took us out of everything. Uh, yeah. And that was the episode on the detective herself. Yeah, um, I it's a good episode. I like it. It gives a lot of great background detail. It gives her motivation for mm. even though she's not really a det- detective, like why mm. she wants to be the one to solve this case and why she needs to do it fast. It gives that. I It t- took us out of that after party. It's a completely different story. It's yeah. a, it's a flashback story. So like, I almost feel like that character would have been just as effective or just as interesting. If you get those details kind of sprinkled throughout the rest of the show. Uh-huh. She, she has, um, that I did not an assistant, uh, not and no, 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 I'm not sure what like a deputy, a, a, just, just yeah. like another, yeah, another police officer who's like a rung or two below her, yeah, yeah, who's who's kind of doting on on her uh, as as she gives orders and stuff like that. But he's also the one that is like, well, hey, we kind of need to do things by the book, and you're not yeah. doing things by the book here. Come on, what are you doing? Um, like I, I I like the bits and pieces when he's on the phone with whoever the higher up is and like yeah. you get details about them that way that he's like this middleman relaying info like they said you need to stop or like they said this guy's mm. on his way 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 here. I like all the information. I don't know if taking us out of that party was the best decision. Um, on one hand, it does mix things up. Right. Like we've been there at the party for like six episodes straight and then we finally get get, get this. So I I understand that. I just it 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 doesn't fit with the rest of it. It doesn't. That makes sense. Yeah, It is an outlier. I agree that it might not be completely necessary, but I do like that she gets to be as rich as anybody from that high school class. She gets exactly. to have her own backstory. Detective Danner. I think I called her Detective Dan in like the yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> I like that she has. Um, and the case she is solving really tells us a lot about her character, how she is very empathetic to the people she she deals with. Like when that young girl um, who was like stealing Amazon packages off of people's porches, she, she asked her about like, you've got a tattoo on your hand. Was it your mom's name? I'm sorry to hear that your mom died. Like she... It's a nice illustration of her being kind and being really devoted and like knowing when to skirt the rules and no and showing why she is so dedicated to solving this case, why this is a personal matter for her. And the case is not directly plot related, but you can see that she learned things on that case to investigating mm-hmm. Fred Savage that she is using here to like understand the, yeah. the the criminal minds and how somebody might cover up for something. It is, it gets us something like it is effective. It, it is valuable. It's not a filler episode. It just is an outlier. Right. Exactly. Um, so yeah, maybe it 
could have just dealt with that information differently is is what I was thinking. But uh, it, like it, I I keep going in in my mind. I keep going back to Knives Out. That yes, th- this kind of felt like Knives Out in a way that this like high, the, the small group of like high school reunion friends that went to this after party is this like weird dysfunctional family. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. And, and the thing is in that um, for, for the detective for Benoit Blanc, uh, like you, you, you don't know much about him. Like you, you get his character, his personality as he's investigating the case and I, 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 th- I think that's what I'm relating it to uh, is, is that I like the way that Benoit B- Blanc is such a standout character just from being there, there ju- ju- just yeah. f- from his presence. Um, and she has presence in spades. Right. Like she oh, yeah. very much has her own personality. Like she wants the dirt. She wants the gossip. She wants like all of that, that stuff as a, a good detective probably mm-hmm. does want. Right. They want all of the details, but she she is seeking these details in a way that is wholly her own um, that, that I like and gives her this personality and this character. Um that I think is effective by itself. Like I almost just didn't need it. Like if I didn't know that stuff about the case, I think I would have been fine and would have liked her just as much. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, like you said, it's still a good one. It's not filler. Uh, It's just an outlier. That's all. What was your favorite episode in terms of the genre tropes that it was playing with? Uh, ooh, you, you, to be honest, I think my favorite is the one that was underserved the most. The art house film. Yeah, at the start. which is. Yeah, we get like a mini one from one of these other characters, one of these other, you know, alumni at this after party. And hers is like the example case. Yes. <laughs> hers is like the, the the pitch to help you understand what's going to be happening before we have the first full length interview. Yeah, I did dig that I, one. I oddly really liked that one a lot. It might be because I was an art student. And so I like <laughs> the art house films and stuff. Um but it like it is I, I think it despite it only being an example as you put it is maybe the f- like one of the farthest they go like yeah. down the genre rabbit hole like that one feels like a different genre. There mm. are some that it's like, OK, this is maybe an action movie. This is maybe a horror movie, but it just mm. doesn't feel like they go all the way in on some of these things like it, fe- it felt like they could have pushed a couple of the other genres more um, yeah yeah whereas this i think just by the nature of it like stood out of like oh like yeah this is like they're like the the type of dialogue has changed the 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 way they're delivering the lines has changed mm. the look of it has changed like it, it was it was just so stark that it it, it really stood out. And I, I, I liked that the lines went from normal da, da, da dialogue to them just philosophizing in like weird <laughs> ways. I'm just like, well, yeah, what, what are you even talking about? This is weird. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I just I, I wish we got more of that that one. But that one stood out with me and like still sticks in my, mm-hmm. my, my mind like that one that one scene where the Asian guy st- st- stands up after they've been looking at. I mean, yeah. you guys know me. I'm terrible with names. The one of the Ned? main guys that got dr- the drawing on oh, his face. A, a Anique. Anique. Um, like when they're looking at him and he stands up and says something. It, yeah, the <laughs> Asian g- 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 guys, just some f- f- philosophical comment on <laughs> something. And it's just like, what are you even talking about, dude? Like, <laughs> like that's nothing to do with anything. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I that that one stuck 
stuck with me a lot. I I would have hoped that that would have set us up for more mini interviews like that. Like each episode would have or like, like one full length one. Yeah, yeah. Or like we would talk to Ned or whatever his name is for a couple minutes. We talked to Jennifer one or Jennifer two, and they would also give us their view of the night, just a shorter one, maybe like five or 10 minutes with their own genre convention. And how many right. genre conventions can you pull this out into? Does somebody have a sci-fi view of the evening? What does that look An like? Old Western, right? Like, Oh yeah. That'd be sweet. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just, just stuff like, or like, like, uh, not even like certain genres, but like extensions of existing movies. Oh, uh, yes. L- l- like, it, like that'd be an inter- interesting one somehow. Like, oh, this is uh, an ex- extent. Like, why does the room suddenly look like 2001? Like in, in, <laughs> in here, like uh, who knows? But yeah, would have been nice to see more mini interviews yeah. or follow ups. And maybe that's something they can they can do in a season two. I don't know. I think my favorite genre episode was Zoe's animated episode. I think the art style looks wonderful. I love that that is like she is an artist. That is her art style. That's what you see when she like draws a picture of Anik. He looks just Mm -hmm. like that drawing she did. I like that visual design a lot. And I think the the format it takes where she has these different versions of herself. Like she's got like party Zoe and angry Zoe and high Zoe and mama bear Zoe reminds me of things like pepper Ann or something where she would look in a mirror and like her reflection would talk back to her as like her mm-hmm. conscience or as her cheerleader or whatever. So I think putting that style together with the animated special was a really effective match. Yeah, indeed. Um. Yeah, I I I I, I like the those ones. Uh, we mentioned the one uh with the kid, the the her yes. her, her, her da- da- daughter. <laughs> that one I think is also one of the more fun ones because yeah, they they have to do this scene over and over again where they're at the party. They're like, okay, we stand over here and then we go talk to these people, but every time it's like. Okay, once more, but now it's an action movie. Now, once more, but it's a horror. Now, once more, but but, but it's a it's from the perspective of a kid, right? And yeah. so, like, well, what does that mean? And yeah, well, like you said, there's these big exaggerated moments when someone gets mad, they get really mad and animated yeah. and stuff like that. Uh-huh. And hands on their hips and they're pouting and and dad and used his just, thunder voice, right? Yeah, it's just. It's so cool to 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 see them do these same scenes over and over, uh, but just in these different styles, which is also why I was like, I, I wonder how much of this is improv, because that's what it feels like. It feels like this whole thing is like, here's the scene. Here's the staging. Here's the blocking. We might need to get specific scenes, but it's essentially yeah we'll be like okay once more and now it's a art house film Mm -hmm. right and they have to interpret what that means there on on (laughs) on 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 stage to stage and i like that i like that a lot um and then the musical that one sticks out yeah (laughs) that one's a lot of fun I'm so happy he gets to sing. Uh, We mentioned earlier, we did this podcast trade and I made you listen to an episode of Comedy Bang Bang. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ben Schwartz is always on Comedy Bang Bang. He's on there like once or twice a year. I think this is how I learned about the after party. He was was on it in January promoting the show. And sometimes him and the host Scott Ackerman will do episodes where it's just the two of them. There's no other guests. There's no other improv characters. And they play this game called the Olympic Song Challenge, where one of them will start singing and the other one will have to like take a melody or take a word and then start singing something else. Like they just go back and forth, like doing connected songs to each other for like as long as they can. Interesting. Like 10 minutes or something. He's a big musical theater guy in, in his own life. And I was really happy that he got to have the musical theater episode. That's such a yeah. good match for who he is and what his strengths are. Yeah, uh, and the songs were both 
equally good and bad at the same time. Like, yeah. it's, what, it's, like, it's what you would expect of like Disney Channel original like quality. Uh, <laughs> it, it, like it felt like high school m- m- sure. musical. Yeah. Right. If, if that makes sense, which I know some pe- people would probably argue you that there are some good so- songs. There in, are in, in that. But like it, it felt like this kind of like it, it on one hand, it feels like a joke. But on one hand, he's so sincere about all of yes. this. Like, like he, he, yeah, it's just, oh man, it's, it's really funny. <laughs> him <laughs> rapping, him trying to do all of these like different styles of, of, mm-hmm. of, of musicals. Um, fantastic stuff. One of my favorite jokes is in the actual high school reunion where there's a karaoke stage set up and Anik goes up there and somebody makes him sing my neck, my back, but he doesn't want to sing the dirty parts so he has to change them. And at one part he says, my neck, my back, I like my pancakes in a stack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> well, it's 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 not even that he like d- d- doesn't want to sing the dirty parts. I'm sure I'm sure he's fine singing those. But he dedicated <laughs> Alone, maybe, it. Yeah, he he dedicated oh, right. it to his high school crush. Yeah, his, yeah, he his wanted chemistry to... <laughs> partner Zoe. Right, it was it was supposed to be Angel by Shaggy, which yeah. is a song that like thematically continues throughout the show. But yeah, somebody picks this instead and needs to change it too. girl. <laughs> shake your feminism like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, yeah. There's, there's lots of little great moments like that. Lots of like one liners, uh, uh-huh. and, and stuff like that. Like, I, I think it was in, uh, in the flashback episode for the detective, uh, when they're in like Colorado or something and they 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 mention Colorado or or Arizona, the Florida, Arizona. Of the West. Yeah, I was like, I, that, that's a great line. I like the West. when she's helping this woman who had a package stolen off of her porch it was like an egg pod cooker detective danner's like i've got one of those i love that thing and she keeps extolling the virtues of the egg pod cooker and then you see her use one like i like that it's this running joke but also it is a sincere running joke she really does love the egg pod cooker absolutely absolutely (laughs) Uh, so let's talk a little bit more about the music in particular, because this leads kind of to the a- 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 end. Yeah, uh, it, 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 I know we're in spoilers, but yes, it was Ben Schwartz's k- character who I was so surprised. Um, Let me tell you. OK, so starting the show, I figured these were our options. At first, I thought maybe this is a murder on the Orient Express and all of them played a part in it. Like yes. everybody mm-hmm. killed him and nobody <laughs> killed him. And then I thought, it obviously seems like it's Walt, but maybe they won't do that. But maybe they think we're not going to do it because (laughs) they they think we think they won't do it because it's so obvious. And it'll flip flop back and forth and ultimately it will be Walt. And then I wondered if maybe a bird did it. (laughs) Do Do you know that story about how people think an owl killed a lady? No. Okay. There was a, a a true crime case, a murder case, where this woman, it was believed that her husband like pushed her down the stairs to, to kill her. But there was also a theory that, you know, like they lived in this big house, they had like open windows or skylights or something. There's also a theory that a owl swooped in and knocked her over. And like the husband had nothing to do with it. He really wasn't in, in, innocent. Like an owl like, knocked into her. Because so look at the lacerations on her forehead. Those could be like owl talons. There was a, a higher than usual rate of owl activity in the, <laughs> at that time. There's like a documentary about this on Netflix. I don't remember what it's called. A documentary about the case at large. And the part about the owl is like 15 minutes. Uh, was it called and then, the, the staircase or something that was like the that? dramatization of okay. this true life event with uh with Tony Collette and Colin Firth on HBO Max. Yet, yes, and I don't know if that talked about the owl or not, but I figured since they were outside, like he fell from a balcony. This show is so silly 
Maybe it would introduce this wild, completely outside party or it's some insane, like, uh, you know, uh, God's, you know, God's wrath, like accident. It's an act of God. It's like a complete wild coincidence that would never happen in a million years. And that's what killed him. Right. Yeah. Like so maybe I was he not- was up, upstairs in his bedroom sh- showing something to Gen 2 when her yeah. water broke uh, and and he slipped on on her, <laughs> on her, yeah. her fluids and that's how he felt <laughs> but she's having her baby 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 so she she needs to go go and yeah. like can't, can't deal with, with with all of that, that stuff uh, yeah it, who knows <laughs> yeah I didn't think they were going to pick somebody and like isolate somebody out of our main cast of characters I thought it would be somebody outside of that. So I was surprised it was one of them. And it was Jasper. I had never suspected Jasper. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, I, 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 I liked the mystery a lot. But the, the, this relationship between uh, the b- b- between yeah, yeah, Jasper and Xavier uh, actually ended up being a really, really good one uh yeah d- 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 not good as in like it's a good one you all should emulate that it's, one but it's, like it's not it, sweet but it is nuanced it is layered it winds up being a stronger element of both character stories yes. than you think it's going to be yeah uh they were in a band together in high school before they kind of really d- knew who they were and all of that S- stuff it was a ska S- band scarpe diem scarpe diem yeah, scarpe yeah, yeah, diem yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and God, they're, they're so bad. They, they were awful. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and, uh, they have this like a YouTube recording of them playing some event. And yeah, it's Ben Schwartz being like, how great is this party? And it's just, it is the most, it's so, it's like, it's cringe. It's so like, oh my God, what are you guys doing in high school? It's It's awful. You're in high school in 2006. Like, Right, what else yeah. are you going to do? You're going to start a ska band. And I feel like they're playing <laughs> at a barbecue for an event that normally wouldn't have a barbecue and like a band playing. It was like, oh, the Martin Luther King Jr. Day barbecue. <laughs> where, where they got a ska band, band to play. That's <laughs> like, so weird. Um, but yeah, it's it's cringe. It's it's so funny to watch. Um, but yeah, the band isn't working um and no. and so they end up kind of going their own separate ways there's an incident at another party when they're in high school where anik gets in trouble with the cops um and, and xavier and, and anik are fighting uh and that that whole scene was hilarious too um but that is when he decided to change his name to Xavier and mm. uh, go by that and just have this new personality, which kind of got him into this like pop star boy band ish kind of personality uh, where he's just a complete airhead douche. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but he he had this successful hit song, which mm. is what got him rich and famous. Uh and uh, he like at the, I think by the end of the show, you kind of re- realize how how lost his character is like yes. just how, how much he doesn't he doesn't really know what he wants or who he is or what he wants to do with his l- l- life. Um, and it, yeah, it it is kind of sad that like he, he is no longer around and he gets murdered, but he does end up stealing like this little sound clip uh which i guess is not fully stealing but it, it was an no, idea he, of yeah. from uh their earlier band and is wanting to incorporate it into a new song and ben schwartz sees that and is, is like holy shit dude that's that's me like that's my thing like mm. you can't have that that's mine <laughs> like i'm supposed to be the next star here um and and then yeah, that's eventually what leads him to murder Xavier. Mm-hmm. But we get the scoff stuff, which was completely ridiculous. 
the <laughs> music stuff in Ben Schwartz's stuff, like I said, is kind of feels like high school mm. musical mm. to me, but it's all so well done. Yes. They they have like little small dance numbers. They have stuff that is more like musical theater stuff where, yeah, like he he's he like stands up on the like coffee table and like walks over as it's a so solo and the lights fall on him and, and stuff like like they they stage it and light it like it's actually a musical. Mm. It's fantastic. I I love it. Um it, it this may seem like a weird question but considering what we just talked about how did you feel about the opening song for the show i was going to bring this up how shaggy's okay. angel really does relate to the show a lot this is was be zoe's favorite song so, and it so i can can continue with that thought that's not what i was talking about though. oh I, I meant the like opening credits uh oh song. yeah but continue with your uh, i think like the f- thoughts on shaggy here <laughs> i think one of the first scenes in the first episode like the first flashback we get is like he pulls up to the high school reunion he's playing that song so i think of that song yeah. and then that's how yeah. the show ends um but like this is always favorite song and in high school and he put it on a a mix cd for her and like the first letter of every song title was supposed to spell out like Anique, Hart, Zoe. It's really, really cute. I love that he's like a professional escape room designer, and you see this sort of puzzle brain yeah. in these all these other aspects. Like, oh, I'm gonna make her a coded mix CD. I really like that. And at the the episode, the final episode ends with the two of them driving off together and finally kissing, and he plays that song. Mm-hmm. And the lyrics of the song go. Girl, you're my angel. You're my darling angel. Closer than my peeps you are to me. Which to me reflects how like Jasper, like he's to turn his back on Jasper. You can't believe that Jasper murdered a guy. So like mm. now he has like lost this really close friendship, but also in the process gained this romance. And he said, and then the song goes, you were with me through my incarceration. And Anique was the main suspect throughout most of the show. I'm sure if I looked at the lyrics for Angel, I may notice more parallels, <laughs> but I just finished the show like right before we started recording because my internet was out yesterday. And just in the past like hour and a half, I'm like, wow, they really got a lot out of Angel. Angel really means something to this show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That 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 song does act as this like recurring theme throughout the show. Uh, which I, I think really makes their romance uh, between Anique and Zoe yeah. makes it re- really, really strong. It makes it kind of the emotional core of mm-hmm. of the show, which, yeah, if season two is about a wedding, I kind of hope <sighs> it's, it's their it. yeah. wedding. I would love to see see that because um, I, I think by the end of the show, uh, yeah, Z- Zoe has gone through a divorce uh, their kid is there in the midst of all of this and uh, the divorce and the murder and all of the uh, uh-huh. stuff. Uh, but like we said, the, uh, the God, God, what was his name? Brett? Yeah. The, 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 that's his name. Yeah. He he's he's the one that has this like realization of like why he, he, they're mm. getting a divorce. Like they're all in these good spots, but he has this great line at the end when he's talking to his da da daughter. Um, and they're both looking at like Anik and Zoe being like, but I'm still cooler than Anik, right? And she's like, yeah. She's like, all right. He has to he has to prompt her into saying it. He's like, this is when you say (laughs) this is when you say this, and she's like, okay, Dad. (laughs) But like, like he still has that. Like, I feel like they're gonna be this odd, like mix of a family still. Right. Uh, which I really l- 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 like. And so I, I hope we get to see more of that and more of their dynamic as like, OK, I recognize you guys were married first and you're the father of the daughter. But uh, like, uh, the, right, like I want to see more of that, especially yeah. in this like wedding celebration setting, because uh, I think that would yeah. be fantastic. 
Yeah, Brett goes too hard on writing a speech to show, no, I, I really am over this. Look, look how noble I am. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to make her another photo slideshow. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they, they have a lot, lot, lot of stuff in there that I think is fantastic. Um, mm-hmm. I, oh, wait, weird. Uh Oh, he plays Swamp Thing. Okay. I'm looking at the actor that played Swamp Anique. Swamp Thing. Uh, Sam Ray yeah. records him. Uh, I'm not super familiar with his Me filmography, either. what he's been in. I don't think in. so. He's been in a number of stuff that I think people know. Um, he was in the 2016 Ghostbusters movie. Um, he was in Ralph Breaks the Internet. He was in Promising oh. Young Woman uh blah blah he was in the tomorrow war uh okay t- for tv he was in the office he was in veep he was in drunk history uh oh. he was in new girl portlandia uh detroiters um blah blah blah, blah yeah i was uh modoc modoc um, and then the l- last thing that I that caught my eye here is that uh, in the Harley Quinn cartoon, he oh. plays the v- v- voice of Swamp Thing. Cool. Uh, yeah, I was watching him thinking, I probably know this guy from something, whether I've seen him before or I've heard him on a podcast, but he's so charming. I really yeah, look forward to the next fantastic. time I get to see him. I loved this whole cast. Like, like I was mostly familiar with Ben Schwartz. Tiffany mm-hmm. Haddish, I I haven't seen as much of her work, but whenever I do see her, she is so charming, so compelling. She was the she was a voice in the Lego movie too. That might be how mm-hmm. she got here. <laughs> She's yeah. very good in it. It's excellent voice work. <laughs> um so I I wanted to ask specifically about the opening credits. Yes. With, with the music we got in, like, the actual show part mm. of the show, what did you think of the opening credits? I liked them. I liked how they showed all the different genre conventions. I like that they went in narrative order, like, in the order of in which these stories are being told. Like, it is... You, you see Sam Richardson before you see Di Baron Holtz and Ben Schwartz and everybody. Like, it proceeds in the order that the episodes are presented. Mm-hmm. There's a, a graphic for every episode, and you don't realize what all of them are at first. Like, I was really confused by the woman turning into a bear until I saw Zoe's episode. Right. You think the, like, flashing police lights are just for the overall crime theme. And you're like, oh, there's a specific Danner episode that's formatted like a police procedural. That's why that's there. Yes. Yeah, I I liked the credits a lot. The, I I don't feel like the song fits with the rest of the show. It does, mm. but it doesn't. Like it's 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 a great so- song. I liked it a lot. I loved mm-hmm. the sequence. Yeah, I did. I didn't ca- catch that it like thematically fit with all of the uh, the the the. Uh, the like back st- st- stories and stuff until like halfway in the sh- show. I was like, oh, it's depicting all of that stuff. It's a much darker tone compared yeah. to the rest of the show. It is like this, like, oh, there's been a murder. Like, there's a mystery here that we need to solve. Hey, let, let's let's all hush now. Like, there there needs to be uh like some seriousness with this, and then we get into like. Keep your head in the game. Like, how great is this party? Yeah. Like, <laughs> this doesn't fit. It's so weird. Uh-huh. Um, so th- that that was strange to me in terms of the music uh, of 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 just like why why pick that song uh, or or that yeah like that opening credits to to fit with the rest of this because I, I don't think it fits. But it was still good. Like, yeah. I, I, it was just like this is also really really good. Um, I, 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 I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, I, 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 it was just an, an interesting choice to me. I don't really mm-hmm. have much else to say on on that, but something that I wanted to see your thoughts on. Does Pachinko have cool opening credits? An amazing one. It's great. oh boy, yeah, it's see, fantastic. The, the guy, 
I haven't watched a lot on Apple TV Plus yet, but Severance is one of the best opening yes. credit sequences I have seen. So I'm God, wondering if that's something that like. Music. Uh, I wonder if that's something the platform is dedicating themselves to. Like, let's just have really solid opening credits for all our shows. That's the thing. The the difference between Severance and this one here is that the music in Severance for that opening credits sequence, uh, as well as the stuff that is depicted in that opening Mm. credits sequence, the way those characters are moving and walking, it's offbeat. It's bizarre. It's unsettling. Yeah. And that's exactly what you get yes. in the show. Whereas the opening credit sequence to uh to the after party is slow. It's darker. It is there's mm. there's there's intrigue in the show, mm. which fits a murder mystery. Yeah. Let's be honest. But the way they depict that murder mystery in the show is this comedy. It's more light hearted. It's bonkers. There's weird things. There's an animated <laughs> episode, right? Like they do a whole thing from the perspective of a child. Like it just it it seems more wacky. Yeah. Than the opening credits portrays it. So there's just a slight disconnect there uh-huh. with with that um and then yeah P- pachenko is also really good too cool i like that one a lot um but yeah there you go nice so, um other things to talk about uh in this here um how did you feel so once the once the the like the thing of how it was all done, how it was all uh, revealed and stuff. How did you like the the big reveal here? I liked it because, like I said, I was not suspecting Jasper at all. And to watch his demeanor kind of change, like watching an actor I've only ever seen do like real fun, friendly, silly work to watch him be a little bit more dramatic and a little bit have this edge to him was exciting. Yeah. And how there's this like slow sort of realization from everybody where they're all looking at him different and he's looking at them different. And you're right. I don't know if I necessarily could have put it together on my own. Maybe it does rely on some some information that we don't exactly have, but it works like everything tracks like you buy it logistically and you buy it emotionally that that's what happened. Mm -hmm. And I love the whole like. Uh, murder reveal scene. Where Detective Danner's walking around. She's got a purse over her shoulder the whole time. She doesn't interact with it. She doesn't put yep. anything in the purse or take it. You know, take anything out of it. It's just there. It's a purse purely as costuming and, and not and not as a prop. She's walking around. She's like picking up things off of snack trays, and she's like, "This is good." No, I don't want that. <laughs> like I love all her business she has while she's announcing the murders, and how she's got like. It could be Brett or it could be Anik. And then she like is waiting to see if Anik is going to admit, no, there's no way it could have been Brett. I saw Brett at this time. It can't be him. So Because she's like, I know it's Jasper, but I don't know like how close Anik was. I don't know if Anik knew that's what it is. So let me outright accuse him and see if he gives up his best friend or not. See how he behaves. I like that she's got yeah. so many different goals in that scene. She does. She she has this mindset. Uh, like she she has this mastery of the 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 scene as she's put it all together. Um, but yeah, does this really interesting thing is because well, like you had m- m- mentioned mm. the scene in her flashback where she's really trying to empathize with the girl that had yeah. the the uh, tattoo of her mom's name on her. Hand. like she has this thing about people like she really wants to try and help people um and i i think that's where she sees anique right is is, mm. is like here's mm-hmm. someone who is caught up in the middle of this has no idea what's happening yeah and is gonna be de- devastated when he, he figures out what happens here so in in a weird way but, but I, I, I guess one of the things she was still trying to determine at the end there was how much exactly does he know? Because they are 
best buddies, right? So is he covering for him somehow? Is, yeah. is he in, in like she wants to figure out exactly how much he knows, but she has a hunch that it's not that he he knows nothing and that he will be devastated. Stay, stay, stay. So, yeah, he get, she gives him this opportunity by accusing him or by accusing mm. Barrett, the wrong person uh, to 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 stand up and basically identify himself as, yes, I knew nothing about this. It can't be him. Mm. I saw him when he did this thing and that clears his name and does that. And like, yeah, it's it just it, it's her trying to reach out in her own yeah. way and like take care of him there which is in an interesting way to do the th- th- hangs um and then yeah of course at the end when all of that is revealed he's devastated anik is just like how, yeah they all just they they mm-hmm. look at him differently how could you uh your your songs weren't even that good i i i, I, yeah. I, I don't know right like <laughs> you would never bless your track <laughs> yeah um God, uh, yeah, it's 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 an interesting show. I liked the reveal a lot. It did feel like uh, I mean, we, we've we basically mentioned a bunch of our recommendations, I'm sure already. And you know me, it did feel like a Detective Conan yes. <laughs> episode where where she is revealing it all. And you're just like, I wouldn't have gotten this. Like, how? How am I supposed to know all of this stuff? I, I I I think this one does a good job of straddling the line where it's just out of reach enough where it is kind of ridiculous, but it's it's all stuff they showed. It's it's all yeah. stuff, but it's not stuff they focused on is the thing. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. maybe if you picked up that in the background, it like in this person's retelling of the thing. Yeah. The the closet door was open in his thing yeah. and it like that stuff is in there but they never draw attention to that stuff um so uh, yeah you're, you're not gonna really solve this casually uh but it's still it's still fun like that is mm. part of why i like detective yeah action. on one hand i like to see if i can solve it but i also like these big ridiculous reveals like aha but an owl did it instead yeah. like aha, you would have never known but an owl flew in at the most opportune time and i just like what that's stupid this is so dumb <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah ben schwartz sonic flew in at the opportune right. time and killed him <laughs> uh, and that's yep. how we get uh sh- shadow that's when he turned evil right that no shadow's a separate guy he's not evil sonic know. right i don't i mean you don't know reductively he's evil sonic <laughs> but I, like I, I, like how venom is evil spider-man but he's not literally like evil right. spider-man <laughs> yeah okay i was like look i don't know a lot about sonic but i'm pretty sure I shadow is a about separate sonic. guy <laughs> he eats the chili dogs yeah he sure does um yeah good fun i i'm, I'm glad we watched this I, one yeah, I'm I'm happy we did too. It's and I think it's a show that I could see myself watching again in the in the future once or you know, like I want to show this to people and like track everything. Like can I actually follow the steps as they're happening in real time? Uh there's so in- much packed yeah. into this. I I I also love the fact that Anik passes out and everybody draws on him and he's got that for the rest of the show. He spends eight episodes with like cat whiskers drawn on his face. And it's yeah. he's got these different things drawn on him, and it's also a small mini mystery to like who drew what thing and why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um it's yeah, there's just some great little smaller details yeah. in in this. That that is the, the 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 thing. The mystery is solved by those smaller details. Yeah. So Yes. D- you you can see there's there's little smaller lines in there. It's things in the background that's happening. 
uh, I like the reveal of how the <laughs> arrow got in the the poster. Yeah, uh, I like the reveal of the the liquid on the floor yeah. be, 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 being Gen 2's, uh like amniotic <laughs> f- fluid. I like, <laughs> like, I like when just... Gen One thinks that Xavier peed on her, and then she finds out that it's him dumping out the um the flask of whiskey and ginger and cat tranquilizers. And she's like, oh, that's worse. And they were like, no, no, it isn't. That's better. God, it's so funny. Um, yeah, yeah. All, all, all of that stuff is just really, really funny. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's some great details in there. Uh, I can't, I can't wait for season two. Hopefully, I, uh, I'm excited. If they're already working on it now, hopefully that it comes out by the end of the year. Who knows? Um, oh, I don't know. Well, it said it was greenlit in March, so I don't know okay. like well. how long it's going to take to put it together. It could go on, so guys. many ways chop, if they're. <laughs> yeah. You get to work, construct an extremely elaborate, impeccable mystery for us. Right. Thinking it's not about like, like he what's has a the sequel to Spider Man into the Spider Verse <laughs> to work on across the after party. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> into the after party. <laughs> Thinking about what season two could be like, we had an episode from the point of view of a child. Uh, we got those two pregnant gins. Season two could have an episode from the point of view of a baby. We could have a Rograts episode. You know, Zoe and Anik could get married, but also there's that one student who's sleeping with their old teacher who is there at Xavier's house. I think Jasper, somebody walks in on them. We never follow up with them. There were a lot of people who were there at the party at the beginning of the night who have all left. And I'd yeah. like to follow up with one of those people, like in season two. Yeah. <laughs> like there's some acquaintance who gets invited to the wedding. It could be like that wedding. Everybody gets invited to the wedding of this old teacher and student, whoever they were. Like there's so many. Oh my God. Season season two could be a really interesting expansion that and we get somebody an else's perspective twist. Like on, you think it's, on it's, all it's, of season one. You think it's going to be Anik and Zoe, but it's the teacher and the student. Oh my God. <laughs> That that's wild. Uh, yeah, I I'm 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 now like I like we said one of the strengths of this show was the character arcs. I like yeah. these characters now. I like Anik. I like Zoe. I like charming all of them. Little dysfunctional family that they got 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 there. I now want to see like. Beyond the reunion, yeah. What do they do in their normal life? Like, who are their their coworkers? Who are their yeah. friends that they hang out with on weekends? Like, I think those are the people we could potentially be introduced to in season two, um, and and just like an expansion of this cast in a way that is also a development in their lives like let's let's explore these characters more um yes but yeah also if it's the teacher and the student getting married (laughs) that'd be kind of who are these characters we like barely see so they could be anybody (laughs) Right, yeah, which w- which would mean like all new cast, like maybe Anik yeah. and Zoe are th- 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 there because they liked the teacher and like kept up with him, but like this is awkward that they married a student, like they just like that's your in character, but it's like an all new ca- cast. I think that would be hilarious. That mm. would be really funny. I know yeah, Wikipedia two could be anything. has some of the people cast already oh um what season two we have elizabeth perkins uh okay zach woods um uh-huh. paul walker hauser Anna or, or, uh, Conkle. Paul, paul walter hauser they have oh, poppy liu um they have anna conkle uh jack whitehall vivian wu ken jong and John, John Cho. Cho. Yeah. Well, I mean, if we're getting it, it, several cast members of Asian descent, maybe this is, I mean, I, I don't want to pigeonhole them or make presumptions, but maybe we'd see Zoe's family. Who yes. Knows? Yeah. That's, uh, that's what it's looking like. Yeah. 
That's that's an exciting cast. I, I I'm so excited to see Anna Conkle again. I haven't seen her in anything outside of of Pin Fifteen. Yeah. Uh, that's so funny. Um. Oh, and then for recurring, it also says Will Greenberg and John Gemberling. I don't know. Oh, John Gemberling. Yes. Oh, yes. There you go. Um. I guess. That's it. I, oh, we, we do have to say I, I did like uh, I, I did not recognize him in this at all. I knew he was in the in here and I knew he who he was playing. Didn't recognize him at all. But Channing Tatum uh, was in, in this. Had, had a, <laughs> in the Hall and Oates movie. Yeah, the Hall and Oates biopic, which I, I'm surprised <laughs> that he isn't an actual thing. Like, I would like, love it. I love it. <laughs> writing the song and it's like, this town just eats people up. This town is an eater of men. Wait, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> they they like the the and then the hungry, hungry hippos movie. Uh, there are some hungry hippos. How 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 hungry are they? Hungry, hungry. <laughs> 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 so dumb but i loved it it was fantastic mm, mm. um so good stuff with that uh yeah i i i was impressed with this show yes go check too. it out it's gonna be a Do lot it. of fun um yeah all right uh let's see let's check in on bingo do we have yeah. any updates on bingo let me would you call this, this a locked screen? I know like anybody could get in or out of the house. It's not that secured, but would you call this a locked room mystery? Since the show yes. mainly, it mainly it's, takes it's place in, in the one, one set. One house. Yeah, yes. it's, it's in that one set. There might be multiple rooms in that one set and the space around it, but it, it is like specifically in this one set. Yeah. Yeah. So locked room mystery. You got that one. Um, that gives me eight bingos. Ah, oh God. Uh, I don't think I have anything that I can do. Ah! So we'll we'll give you uh, your locked room mystery here. And I think that's it for all of us, right? Mm-hmm. Why does that thing? Okay. Uh, well, there you go. I will save that. You got your locked room mystery. Gave you d d two bingos in one on that one. That's kind of wild. Um, so good on you. I am falling behind yet again. Um, but there you go. That is our update for bingo. Movie bingo based on all kinds of movie tropes as we watch mm. uh, these these things here. Um, cool. Recommendations. Let's do that yeah. next. Melissa, what would you recommend? If uh, we've mentioned several classic mystery stories, murder on the Orient Express, knives out, clue. We eventually have to do an actual episode on clue because we keep just mentioning it all the time. Uh, you know these. You're familiar. Uh, if you want more adult actors playing teens, please watch Pin 15. With the aforementioned <laughs> Anna Conkle. Uh, mm -hmm. It's her and, and fellow comedian Maya Erskine playing themselves as 13-year-olds, as kids going into middle school in the year 2000. And everybody else is an actual kid. And they're playing, uh, they're adult women playing themselves at 13. Yes. And they go on. The show is about like really mundane things that are very important to you when you're at that age, like mm -hmm. uh, buying your first thong, like buying your first cool underwear, or like setting up your first aim screen name, not or, like getting you know, the go right gel pens and, and right, you know, yeah. going over to a party and then you find out it's a boy girl party and there might be kissing and you don't know if you're ready for that, like real. Um, emotional human things that happen to you when you're at that age. The show's so funny, so absurd, but also really poignant and heartbreaking. The, uh, Pin 15 is remarkable to me. It's such an intense combination of emotions. 
Yes. Uh, and if you want something that's just straight up silly, watch Wet Hot American Summer. Both of and which we have covered we here have, on the review show. Yeah, and Wet Hot American Summer has like spinoffs on Netflix. There's like uh, it's a movie about the last day of camp and then you can watch a show about here's the first day of camp that sets up like you know retroactively sets up all the stuff that's in the movie that you know needed to be set up like why there's a talking can of vegetables voiced by H. Sean Benjamin right. uh, and then there's like 10 years after and then there's like comic books about what on American summer it's such a preposterous movie it's one of my very favorites and I love that it's something people keep returning to it's such a cult hit please watch it please enjoy you've only got a little bit of summer left yeah indeed not much su- su- summer left um yeah i you you put a uh, murder on the o- 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 orient express uh i would also say death on the nile which is the sequel yeah. to that one good murder mystery stuff i i do like that this is a tv show format and you can really dig deeper yeah. into all of that stuff that i think is uh maybe unfortunately the uh i mean it's not the it's not a bad thing i liked mur- mur- murder on the orient express a lot mm-hmm. better than i did death on the nile um but I, I, I think those also would have made for good TV shows if you really just like dug into yeah. all of that stuff there. Um, Detective Conan, of course, uh, if you want an anime version of stuff like this, a uh, teenage detective gets transformed into a child. He's a, a superstar, like, genius detective, but now that he's a child, no one takes him seriously. Uh, so when he solves the mysteries, he always has to use a, like, tranquilizer dart on, uh, I, th- I think it's, like, the father of the girl that he likes or something. Mm-hmm. So it knocks him out. He's sitting there on the couch, and then right. he has to, like, use a voice changer to act like it's the father says saying that he's like aha i have solved the mystery and then he explains it all and it's always these ridiculous things of like mm-hmm. how would i have known that uh, right. there's no way to solve that what the hell was this uh but it is g- good it's a lot of fun to check out uh i would highly recommend that uh and yeah knives out like we said, just a wild cast, big yeah. kind of dysfunctional family. Um, <laughs> d- 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 there's not like, the detective in this was not as eccentric, but uh-huh. uh, not, 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 not knives out certainly also has an eccentric detective. Uh, if, if you want a little bit more of that side mm-hmm. of things, so go check those out. Yeah, those all, all good fun. Try an escape room if you haven't before. I yeah. did one once. It is fun. There you go. Um, Melissa, next yes. week here on the show, yes. we are finishing up our monthly coverage of Fringe. We've been Final watching season. the TV show uh, season to season, month to month, uh, and we are finishing it up this next week. Uh so yeah, the season five is only what thirteen episodes. It's a mm. much shorter season than the rest. Um, but I am excited to talk about it. Uh, that is what we will be covering this next week, season five of Fringe. Mm. However, after that, the week after yes! that, it will be September, and we have started a tradition here in September called Shame Timber, in which. Uh, the first two weeks of the month, I pitch things that are on my list of shame. The next week, you pitch things that are on yep. your list of shame. This could be something that I specifically like. Kyle, how have you specifically not yeah. seen this thing? It's so you or just pop culture in general. Like, mm. oh, my God, you've never seen Star yeah, Tr- Trek. We have to watch that then. Yeah. Uh, something like that. So. I have my pitches for the first week of Shane so Timber here. Uh, pitch number one. Melissa, re- recently you and I went to the movies to go see Nope. 
Oh, that yeah. was my first Jordan Peele experience. Um, I have not seen any of his movies. So pitch number one is Get Out. Um, mm-hmm. This was from a handful of years ago, psychological horror uh, that kind of pushed him. I mean, he was already famous. He was he was known as this like co- uh, comedic genius. But this kind of pushed him into the like, yeah, oh, wait, you can make horror movies, too. What What is this? Um, I I I have I feel like I've gotten enough about what this movie is just from cultural osmosis but i also know nothing about this film i don't know oh. exactly what it's about i know it's about some uh black man i think living with a, a white family i don't know what the circumstances are it's, uh he's exactly. going to visit his girlfriend's family for the first time there you go uh and beyond that, I I know something bad happens. He realizes yeah. he needs to get out. Uh, yes. So that is pitch number one. Get out. Um, pitch number two. Uh, the one that I feel like I should have seen considering my dad is both a big fan of Westerns and Clint Eastwood. Uh, I've seen parts of this. I, I think I think I've seen the start of of this a number of times. Uh, Cause I've, I've seen like the famous scene from this. Yeah. The three p- people are all looking at yes. each other and side eyeing one another. <laughs> Pitch number two is the good, the bad and the ugly. Okay. Uh, I have never seen this. And I know we were Ooh. also trying to get some more Westerns uh, on the show here too. Um, so the good, the bad and the ugly. This is a Western classic starring Clint Eastwood. Uh, from 1966, and I believe it's Italian. If I'm, I'm not mistaken, I, I, maybe from Wikipedia an Italian says. director, but I don't. I, I think it's in English. I don't know. There you go. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, that's one I've I've not seen. But I I, I just I feel I feel like. De- having seen a, a number of Clint Eastwood or like not paid a attention to a number of Clint Eastwood movies as my dad had them on mm. I feel like this is one I would have seen or would have just like how how have I not watched this one yet so that is pitch number two pitch number three I recently watched the offer on Paramount Plus which is all about the making of the Godfather and I haven't seen that I haven't seen The Godfather, so I say, let's just go for it. Let's watch the whole trilogy. Let's watch The Godfather (laughs) trilogy. uh, You can't do just one. They're like Pringles. I mean, I like we probably could. There's especially that that first one. There's enough in there that I think you could absolutely talk about just that one. I've never seen any of them, so might as well just watch them. Uh, and knock that off of my list of shame uh, that I have not seen there. So there you go, Melissa. Good variety. Get out the good, the bad, the ugly, and the Godfather trilogy. Oh, really nice selection here. Uh, You should absolutely see Get Out. That movie is... I've only seen it once, but it mm-hmm. stylistically is really stuck with me. It's so well executed. I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Um, I am going to go with a movie. I also feel a little shamed, not shamed, but like I should see that. I need to get around to seeing that. I've been meaning to pitch it for a while and I just haven't gotten around to it. I haven't found the right time. I also need to watch the Godfathers. I don't know them. Yeah. I know, like, it, his daughter gets married and then somebody uh, takes a cannoli. I don't, yep. I don't know what's in these. The horse head, right? Right, like, I know like... that. <laughs> I don't know what happens. I don't know what the plot is. Yeah, I'm I'm glad that I ended up watching The Offer uh, and it was so close to Shame t- <laughs> Hammer because it's like a good lead up to watching it. Uh, so I, I I was 
thankful that I got to pitch this. And now it sounds like this is what we will do that first yes, week. Yes, we will do in it. September. Do you, do you know where this can be found? I do not. Um, okay, I will. I, did, I will did Google. Not look it up. Uh, I'm sure it'll be on a number of places. Uh, we may have to oh. rent them, uh, but who knows? I where? think it'll be worth it there. I'm... Oh, maybe Sorry, I can, can get, get them on Prime. There. Maybe you can get them on They're Paramount on Plus if you still have your subscription. <laughs> yes, potentially. I think I have it through the end of the month. Uh, but there you go. Oh, we need to talk about Al Pacino again. Yeah, he's back. More Pacino. Good stuff. Um, cool. Well, yeah, don't forget. Next week is season five of Fringe. Uh, and the week after that, the Godfather trilogy. So there you go. Uh, Melissa, where can the people find you on the Internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. And listen to my other podcast, Saturday Morning Obscurities. This is a show where me and my brother Jams talk about weird old kid shows you feel like only you remember. Uh, and coming out sometime in the soon-ish, like the next two months or something. We already recorded it. I forget when it's scheduled. But we uh, talked about a cartoon starring the voice of Ben Schwartz. We talked about <laughs> Randy Cunningham, Ninth Grade Ninja. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Did not even know that was a thing. Um, it was like a mid two thousand, mid to late two thousands, like Disney XD cartoon interesting. about a boy who gets like ninja powers to defend his school. It's it was pretty fun. <laughs> I enjoyed cool. my time. Good stuff. Well, you guys can find me at Yo Kyle Springer. Uh, we are at the Whatnots on Twitter. Go like, share, and subscribe. This is two hundred nineteen of the Whatnots Review Show. We will see you all next time. Bye. Bye.